We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south. We bring you the latest teaching in His Glory Ministry. Tonight we will be in Exodus 19. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher and the living Word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, here Moses is going to speak to God the Father. We're going to see the first time that the uh, shofar has blown. Uh, it's called the, uh, the, the, law, the law in the book of uh, first mention. Uh, this is the first mention of the shofar. We'll explain what the shofar is a reference of, the ram's horn, compared to another symbol that they used later on in the book of Numbers, which was the silver trumpet. And it has very deep meaning in both of these and why God used those. And when we get to the first calling of the shofar, we'll explain that the ram's horn is a, is a symbol of God the Father. So everything we see in Moses here in Exodus 19 with the shofar, the th third month on the third day, uh, the, what the silver trumpet represents versus the shofar, is always pointing to God's dual uh, purpose, his dual covenant, that he was always going to have a new covenant and a, uh, a first covenant and a covenant with his son, the blood redeemer. And we will show you that when we get to that part, uh, explaining what the silver trumpet means, which will come later in the book of Numbers. Okay, let's get into the scripture. Again, no coincidence uh, when it comes to God's word. Everything is done on purpose and place. Third month, third is always a representative of the Trinity. Uh, the, in Judaism, the number three represents the completion of God, the Yahweh's spirit. So three is a very holy number, and it's showing three uh, as the Trinity. We'll show the shofar represented three as well. When Abraham took Isaac up, it was a three-day walk to Mount Moriah, and that was foreshadowing the father giving up his only begotten son. And what would it have to be a sacrifice? It was the, rams, the ram that got caught in the thicket. And that's where we get the ram's horn, which is a symbol of the father. The father giving grace to Abraham, Abraham being a type of the father, Isaac being a type of the son that would come later in the silver trumpet. But that's where the first part of a shofar comes. But this is the first time God tells us to blow the shofar for a particular reason. So after the death or the, uh, the uh, sacrifice of the animal, Jesus, or God tells us in uh, Exodus, Take the, the animal, let all, every, let all the bones in the, in the flesh go, destroy it. But the horn would stay, and you would use the ram's horn. And I don't have the shofar with me, it's uh, on our other desk, but we have a ram's horn uh, shofar here in the office from Israel as well. Okay, let's get into the scripture. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. So they're making their journey, third, third month. Again, God is, is doing everything precise. It'll be three days, three months, uh, and he's taking them out of Egypt in the land of, of the Sinai. Okay, for they have departed from Rephidim. Rephidim is the place that where they were before called resting place. It was between Egypt and Sinai. God's got them on the move and had and come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain of the Most High God and Mount Sinai. And Moses went up to Elohim, and Jehovah called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, Tell the children of Israel. So God the Father, Elohim, says, Come on up here, Moses. This is what I want you to tell my people Israel. Tell this to the house of Jacob, which is another reference to my people Israel. And Moses went up to Elohim, uh, Verse 4, Then you shall see what I will do to the Egyptians, how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. We see that in the book of Isaiah as well, as I bore you on eagles' wings. God uses that term, bore you on eagles' wings, a lot. Because the Lord is taking us when we can't go, and he takes us on this, the wings of an eagle. And this is high, his overlooking over the world always, the symbol of an eagle. The eagle, if you haven't followed an eagle, but they fly above the storms. And when an eagle gets in a distress in a storm, it flies above the storm so that they're out of it. And they can see the prey from, from, from miles away and grab their prey. And the eyes of the eagle are just extremely good. And that's God giving us a, a, a symbolism of how his eyes are always on us. And we, he takes us from the wings of an eagle. It's also quite uh, ironic, too, if you study how an eagle will uh, kill a poisonous snake. 
they'll grab the snake uh, right by the neck because they're so fast, and they'll grab it in their in their their their, their, their claws, and they'll take the snake above the oxygen uh, level of of of, uh, of the earth, so that the snake cannot breathe, and it suffocates the the snake. And that is another way that the Lord is showing us that Jesus Christ has taken the sins away of the world from the evil one, the snake. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, again, here the Lord is saying, not only am I the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not only am I your God, I am the one who brought you out of Egypt, and your love for me, and I'm a holy God, but I am asking you to obey me. To obey me is to love me. Keep my co covenant, is he saying, keep my covenant, even though the covenant of the law was, was, was too much, too much for any man to bear. That's why we had to have the, uh, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to come in. However, the Lord always wanted the condition of one's heart. We can fall in sin nature, but if our heart is contrite, that loves the Lord with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and we're trying to keep the law, and we're seeking his face and, and repentance and the sins that we fall short of. He is graceful and loving, and he will, he will rescue us. He's looking at the condition of our heart, not what we can do in the flesh, because we can't do it in the flesh. Keep my covenant that you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for the earth is mine. You, Israel, will be a special treasure to me, even though I could have command over the whole earth, you will be my special people if you're obedient to me. We see in, in Genesis to, to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. And that's always been the history of the nation of Israel throughout the world. Ever wondered why Satan has always got Israel in the scope? He's always trying to take Israel. Israel is the most hated nation on the face of the earth. There's only one country, basically, that will stick up for Israel on the, on the grounds of, of love, and that's the United States. And we waffled on that a few years ago. We're just getting back to a godly way of keeping our eye and protecting uh, God's beloved Israel. And that blessing is always there. But Satan knows the, the Bible. Satan knows that if he can destroy Israel, destroy the, mess the Messianic line, that he can disrupt what God has intended because Satan knows the Bible. But God is always a hundred steps, a thousand steps, a gazillion steps, a Google steps ahead of Satan. He has won it on Calvary. He should call in his shot. And you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. I'm giving you a promise. All I'm asking for you is to love me, obey me, and follow in my way, and I will take care of you. And he's telling us that today through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is our, our, is our blood redeemer. So Moses came up to the elders of the people, laid before them all the words which the Jehovah commanded. Then all the people answered together and said, all that Jehovah has spoken, we will do. So first they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. So Moses brought back the words to the people of Jehovah. And then Jehovah said to Moses, behold, I come to you in a thick cloud. That is his Shekinah glory. That is his kavod. That is his literal glory of essence comes in a thick cloud that I may hear, that the people may hear what I speak with you and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to Jehovah. So he says, I'm going to bear a witness. So these people will know that you're not just coming up to Mount Sinai and talking to yourself. I am going to speak and they will hear me through this great cloud of glory. Wow. And here he comes. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Jehovah said to Moses, go to the people, consecrate them today, and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. So he said, sanctify the people, prepare, get them in a position to dedicate to me. It's all about coming to see my glory. Get them ready. You just don't show up arbitrarily. You are prepared to meet the Lord. You are seeking his face with a, holy, a holiness, with a love, with a contrite heart, being clean in his eyes. Remember, we can't be clean without the blood of Jesus Christ. We're unclean. As Jeremiah says, we're born with an un, uh, incurably wicked heart. That's why we got to be born again and have a new heart through his son, Jesus Christ. And everything in this verse is pointing to the Messiah, his son, who will come and redeem. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to the people, concentrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Verse 11, let them be ready for the third day. Again, the third day that this is when he's coming. He's coming down from the mountain on the third day, and Jesus Christ rose again on the third day. God of the world comes down. 
God of the God of the of the Son of God and God in the second head goes up. This is how He's redeeming us all on the third day, exactly the way the scripture would say. Well, I will come down from Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set bounds around the people. I'm saying, take heed to yourself that you do not go to the mountain or touch its base. Whatever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. This is a holy mountain. This is my holy mountain. Be obedient to what I tell you. Anyone that touches this will surely die. It's testing the heart. Do you trust me? Do you, are you going to be obedient to me? To love him is to trust him. To love him is to be obedient to him. Not, not, uh, not a hand shall touch, touch him, but he shall uh, uh, surely be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the shofar sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. So this is talking about the shofar. Again, uh, this is God's assembling of the long blast to get the people to come ready. Another blast was them to move out. The shofar was the ram's horn. This is the first time the shofar is actually being mentioned in the Bible. But again, the shofar, uh, according to ancient Judaism, is a reference to God the Father because of what we mentioned earlier, the ram's horn, how Abraham took the ram in the thicket and used that as the sacrifice instead of his son, representing the, 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 the Lord Most High. And we see in Numbers that it, God in Numbers 10.3 tells him to take two or three silver trumpets, take a ram's horn, take one piece of silver and overlay the, the ram's horn to create a silver trumpet. And the reason for that, according to ancient Judaism, is to show the two elements of creation and to show the physical and the spiritualness of the Lord. The two parts, but one single, one single purpose. There's two parts to his process, but one single purpose. We have an old covenant and a new covenant, but one purpose through Jesus Christ. And again, if the ram's horn represents the Father, then what does the silver represent? Silver is always an idiom throughout the scripture as the redemption of blood. Remember, it was 30 pieces of silver. That was the blood redemption. And who is the blood redeemer on top of the ram's horn? One piece connected to each other? That is none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God and God, meaning that there had to be a blood redemption of the ram's horn of the Father to have completion come in. And that's the meaning of the silver trumpet compared to the, the, the shofar. And again, Jesus, uh, on the third year of his ministry, went up and fulfilled that as well to take it to the cross for our covenant so that that one single plan that the Lord had, even in Exodus, it was always going to be Jesus Christ, the redemption. He was the redeemer at, from the beginning of the world, as John 1.1 1, 1 tells us. In the beginning was the word. So the word of God was before the world began, before Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. And the word was with God. So the word was next to God. And the word was God, so the word was God. And the word became flesh, as the scripture says, so that it is part of the three of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit being the literal word of God. That's why the, the word was spoken by God the Father. Jesus Christ became the eternal living word, and the Holy Spirit is our teacher of the living word, all three working in unison for his purpose and his glory. Praise his name. So uh, Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and would wash their clothes. He said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not come near your wives. Be clean and be ready to go to the Lord and give him glory. Then it came to pass on the third day, again, the third day, that there was thundering and lightning for the Lord's mighty glory coming to the mountain, thundering and lightning and breaking. Remember when Jesus broke the, 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 the uh, veil, that said, no more high priest to go into the Holy of Holies to sacrifice any more of the blood. I am the blood redeemer. I am the Christ. He took it to, to the Lord. He took it to the Father, and he broke it with the earthquake that came because the mightiness of God, the Father, who was redeeming his Son on the third day, rose again and sits at the right hand of God Almighty, being the Son of God, our high priest, and God in the second head. All this is pointing to his, his, his glory in the first and the second covenant. Praise his name. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with Elohim, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. And so before that, they said, that, and then the sound of the shofar was very loud, so all the people were in the camp trembled. The sound of the shofar, representing God the Father. Long sound of the shofar. And if you haven't heard of shofar, it is absolutely beautiful. Yesterday was a really weird day for me. Um, I was really run down all day long, and I just kept 
you know, meditating on the Lord because I, I, I couldn't get into my regular routine. I was just whipped. And uh, I kept hearing shofar and shofar, shofar all over. And I kept looking for where a shofar was coming, where I, coming from and nowhere. It just kept on going all day long. So once you hear the sound of a shofar, it never goes away. And we are going to listen to that shofar when the Lord calls his mighty church, the church of Philadelphia, home to be with him. And Moses brought the people of the camp to meet Elohim. They stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke with the glory of God. Because Jehovah descended on it in fire, fire by, uh, fire by night, smoke by day is the glory of the Lord. As the smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked, uh, quaked greatly, the shaking of the mighty power of the Lord. And when the blast of the shofar sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. Wow! So that is the second, and uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's called the Tekiya uh, uh, something or another. I have to research that, but that's the, the, the last trump. That's the longest, loudest trump as moving out, coming up for the glory of the Lord. And that's exactly what's happening when blowing of the shofar. Moses spoke, and then the Elohim spoke, and the people heard him. The people heard God of the universe speaking and shaking of this mountain, and fire, and smoke, and the shaking of lightning, and thunder. Can you imagine this? Just the glory of the Lord everywhere. It's just absolutely the anointing falling on these people. Then Elohim, uh, Jehovah came down Mount Sinai, and the top of the mountain, and Jehovah called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. And Jehovah said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break through the gaze, at Jehovah, at many of them perish. He says, go warn the people. There's a gaze out there, you know, and they, they stumble through that and they hit the mountain. They're going to be dead. Again, God is worried about his people. He loves us so much that he wants us not to make an intentional sin. And let the priests who come near the Lord consecrate themselves. Let Jehovah break out against them. But Moses said to Jehovah, the people can't come up to Mount Sinai. You told them not to come up. For you warned us, saying, set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. Then Jehovah said to them, away, get down, and then come up, you and Aaron with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to Jehovah, lest he break up against them. So did God forget? No, God knew. God knew the hearts of the people. God knew the beginning and the end. God knew that his Shekinah glory and his power was so awesome that they're going to come later on and say, no, 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 we don't want to hear the voice of the Lord. We want you to tell us, Moses, it is too, it is too, too much for us to handle. And the Lord knew that. And the Lord is now saying, I will speak through Moses and Aaron. And you had an opportunity to walk with me and talk with me. And that's the way it is with the Lord today. So many people say, will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? And the Lord speaks to you. The Lord touches you. You see the Lord. Well, he wants to speak and touch and, and talk to you and do miracles in your life too. You've got to trust in him. You've got to want that. If you don't want that in your life, then that, that's the greatest gift that you could possibly get, having the living God and the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit walking with you and in you and showing you great and, things, and unsearchable things that you don't know and talking to you and guiding you. Why don't you want that? The Lord wants us to ask for those special gifts. Paul tells us in Corinthians, we are to ask for these gifts. God wants to give them to you. And too many denominations say, no, they're not for today, or they take a neutral lo level. That's like having a lamp, and you don't plug it in. That's like having the Holy Spirit active, but you don't plug it in. Plug it in and let the light of Christ go. He wants you to have these gifts and ask the Lord. These, the, the poor people of Israel, because of a hardened heart, had the opportunity to walk with the Lord Most High. He wanted to speak with them. He wanted to talk with them. He wanted to be close with them. And they said, no, 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 that your power is too great. Just let Moses and Aaron do it. No, do it for yourself today. Don't listen to man. Seek the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Say, Lord, I humble myself before your, your, your glory. And through your son, Jesus Christ, I ask for repentance of my sins and I want to walk in your way and be obedient to your word and know you, Lord. Come into, come into my heart and let me have an intimate relationship with you. Reveal yourself to me. Show me the gifts of your spirit. I want all the gifts, Lord. Fill me with your Shekinah glory. Fill me with your kavod. Fill me with the anointing of the most high God. And we close up in verse 25. So Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. And this should be just in a wah-wah in a kind of a song like, what could have been? 
but what will be through the Son, Jesus Christ. They had the opportunity to speak with the Most High God, and Moses walked down alone. God wants to speak to you today. Do you want to speak to him today? Do you want to hear from Jesus today? Do you want the Holy Spirit to be alive in your heart, in your soul, in your mind today? Ask him. Ask him. Open up with a heart of love, and he will come in. He will do it. This is uh, it for Exodus 19. We pray that this has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses bless you till next time. God bless you.